my name is Michael Blank, and I'll be your instructor today. Today we'll be talking about, uh, you know, what's a better investment, single family house or apartment buildings? So I've done all kinds of different things. I've flipped about 30 houses. I've held, I've landlorded, I've done lease options. Um, good grief, I've negotiated short sales and I also have done apartment buildings. So I have, I have a unique perspective on this. So, you know, I, I think the conclusion is, uh, you know, is up to you, but I'm gonna give you some pros and cons to consider, okay? Because we're all thinking, you're, you know, what, what is the best real estate strategy here? So here's some things, there's six kind of factors that I consider. And then I'll kind of net it out at the very end, okay? So factor number one is affordability, okay? Single family houses has this beat because they're more affordable. You need less money and they're obviously much more affordable and apartment buildings obviously are not. They require more capital, right? Uh, let's talk about the second factor, which is control over value. What do I mean? Well, with single family houses, the value really is controlled by comps, comparable sales, right? With apartment buildings of five units or higher, which is commercial real estate, it's not like that. It's actually a multiple of income. In other words, like imagine this ATM machine spitting out a certain amount of income, okay? And then uh, that box now is worth a, a multiple of that income, meaning that if the income goes up, then the value of the box goes up as well, okay? Which means that I can control the value of the building. I can go in and, and, buy, and pay fair market value for a building, do a bunch of stuff to it, increase the income, and now all of a sudden it's worth more, okay? So that's the control of value. So apartment buildings kind of wins that slot. Finding deals. Since there are many more single family houses in the world than apartment buildings, it's obviously easier to find deals, okay? So if you wanted to buy a single family house, you could probably do that within three to six months, okay? Apartment buildings, because there's less of them, they're gonna take longer. They might take 12 to 24 months, uh, possibly, to, to buy an apartment building if you're just getting started. If you're already in the business, it oftentimes uh, requires much less work. So moving on to the fourth one, property management. Single family houses are uh, normally are much harder to manage. They're normally spread all around town and, and most people will try to manage those yourself. And with apartment buildings, property management is kind of built into the business model, right? Very few people insist on running their own apartment building. So it's kind of built into the model uh, with, and, and you, you can hire a property management company for single family house, but it's much more expensive as a percentage of, of the rental income, right? So property management is, is much, it's built into the business model for apartment buildings. Let's look at the, the fifth criteria, ability to sell, right? I wanna be able to sell this stuff. So you may have seen, uh, you may have seen a portfolio of single family houses uh, that come up every once in a while. So let's say I have 20 single family houses and I wanna sell that versus say a 20 uh, unit apartment building. Selling a portfolio of houses is much, much harder. You know, it, it's very hard to do. We're trying to, most people end up liquidating one house after another. So they accumulate one after another. In order to sell it and get the maximum value, they're really selling one at a time versus selling the whole thing. Obviously with an apartment building, you can sell the one building, one transaction, and you've sold all 20. Right. Number six is the ability to scale. And this is this is really important. Right. If if I want to, let's say, retire in three to five years and I need a certain amount of passive income and you do the math on this stuff, you might need a whole bunch. You might need 30 or so houses. All right. I'm just kind of throwing a number out there. You need a lot of houses. Right. So you're constantly buying how a lot of transactions versus with apartment buildings. I might be able to do a small apartment building, let's say a 10 unit and then do the second one, let's say, with 20 units. So now I'm at 30 units in two transactions, right? So I now have the ability to scale much more rapidly with apartment buildings than I do with, uh, with single family houses. So those are some of, the, some of the considerations. Now, here's the bottom line, guys, is, is this. You really got to think about what your goals are, okay? If you want to slowly build passive income and long-term wealth, and you're buying a, a single family house, you know, one per year for 10 years, and you have 10 after 10, good for you. That's awesome. I think that's a great, great plan. But if you want to retire, like really retire in three to five years or whatever, and you want five, you need five, seven or $10,000 of passive income, you know, do the math how many single family houses you need to achieve that goal. You'll be probably stunned at how many single family houses you would need. And then think about uh, you owning that many single family houses. For, you know, first of all, you got to find them all, you got to, but owning them. There's a lot of people who burn out in the single family house investing and go to apartment buildings because it's so much work. Okay. So, 
think about really what your goals are. Also, if your goal is passive income, you know, single family house, well, flipping certainly is not is not passive. Wholesaling is not passive, right? Landlording is passive, but again, property management is a challenge. So, so if you're going to go that route, then make sure you have a property manager to, to run those. But, uh, but apartment buildings is really, I think, some of the, the best way to achieve your financial goals, right? You can scale it. It's passive income. It's the easiest business in the world to finance. Uh, it's also the easiest business you can learn, replicate, and do yourself more than any other business, and I've done a bunch of them. So this is why I think if your goals are literally like of the retirement nature, or uh, then I think you should take a, a real strong look at apartment buildings. So anyway, there's some pros and cons, uh, single family house versus apartment buildings. Hope that was helpful. I'll catch you on the next episode. Hey there, and thanks so much for sticking around uh, to the end of the video. I want to give you three things to do in sequence. Let me give you a quick tour of what those three things are, and then I'll show you how to do them. Number one is to download my free ebook called The 10-Minute Offer. It's all about making offers quickly, accurately, to give you confidence about analyzing deals and making offers. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I put out new videos all the time and I want you to make sure you get them. That's number two. Number three is to watch the next the next video in line. All right, so uh, I'm going to go give you a chance to do that right now. And when you click on one of these things, a new tab will open up and uh, for the for the ebook. Okay, so click on the ebook and new tab will open up. The video will stop playing. You can go back to the video and click on step two, which is subscribe to the channel. That will open up a new tab as well. And then three is when you click on the last one to watch the next video in line. That will open up in a current video, vi uh, window. All right, I appreciate you guys, and I will catch you in the next video.